Hi, my name is Heather and this is Strings and Threads. Welcome. Today I'm doing a video tutorial for the Emotional Support Sensory Crab. And the reason why it is sensory is because of the stitching of this, of the body. It's very textured, as well as it being stuffed with dried beans and marbles, giving it a little bit of weight and a little bit of just that sensory feel to it. What you will need for this tutorial are two safety eyes, the size of your choice, but I do like the bigger eyes personally for amigurumi, and that's all just personal preference. If you prefer the smaller eyes, then you can go ahead and use the smaller eyes. I did mine in an acrylic yarn, and the reason why I did that was so that the stitching would show up better, but this could also be amazing in a thicker blanket weight yarn or whatever yarn that you would like. Make a mini in a thread yarn. It's optional to put an applique on the top. You can do any kind of applique. It could be a flower, it could be a hat, it could be anything. And I wanted to show you the yarn that I used, and I'll show it again when I start. It's called Tweed Dreams by Hobby. And this is color 15, and this is 100% acrylic. But again, if you, and I'm using also, and I'll say it again when I show how to make this, I'm using an I, which is a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. But if you are using a different size yarn, you would want to look on that yarn and see what what size crochet hook they would recommend for that. There are a lot of different sizes that work with the acrylic. You could use H or I. I just like my I hook, so that's why I'm using that. But if you're using a thick blanket yarn, you'd probably want to use a bigger hook. So I would just use whatever's recommended on that yarn label. So to start, we're gonna need an I hook, which is a 5.5 millimeter. And the body color that you're gonna use, I would suggest, you can use any yarn that you want. This would probably be pretty amazing with the any kind of blanket or fluffy yarn, but I don't think you'll see the stitch as well in those. So I think an acrylic would probably work really well if you wanted to emphasize the stitch, but if you don't mind the stitch not showing up, I, it would also probably be pretty amazing in, in blanket yarn. You would probably wanna go up hook sizes. I would use whatever hook size is recommended for the type of yarn that you do use. So I'm gonna use this Tweed Dreams and this is acrylic, 100% acrylic, and it is color 15. So to start, you can either use the magic ring or you can chain two and then put 10 single crochets in the second chain from the hook. I'm gonna use the magic ring, but it's perfectly fine to start it the other way. So I'm going to just, I'll do three with you and then we can both pause, finish our 10 and come back. When you get to the 10, you're going to attach with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. I'll show that when we come back. So here's one, here's two, here's three, and then let's finish our round with 10 and then come back. Here's how it looks with the 10. And here's what I mean by slip stitch into the first single crochet. So you go in through the first single crochet slip or stitch and pull up a loop and now it's joined in a circle. Turn, it's gonna be really important to turn for the stitch to show. So we chain one and we're gonna do two slip stitches in the front loop only of each stitch around. You wanna go loose, you don't wanna do too tight. So here's two slip stitches in that first stitch. In the front loop only, you see how I'm only going in the front loop? There's two loops here for that single crochet. The front loop only, two, front loop slip stitches. We're not doing a single crochet, we're doing slip stitches. 
can you hear the frogs? I can't do much about that. <laughs> we get lots, I think they're actually toads. We get lots of toads in the spring around here. There's two front loop only, two slip stitches. Two slip stitches. We're almost there. Two slip stitches. Two slip stitches. Two slip stitches in the front loop only. Two more stitches. <laughs> I don't usually do the whole round because I feel like that's boring to watch the whole round. <laughs> but I guess this time I did. One more. Oops, I got into both loop only. From now until the end of the project, we're going to be, or the end, the end of the body, we're just going to be doing front loop only. Now you can see we're back to the front, so with a slip stitch attached to the first one, and then turn. Okay, so we turned, if you didn't already, chain one, we're going to put in the front loop only, if you're gonna to have to find your stitch, I see the stitch right here. In the front loop only, do two slip stitches. In the next front loop only, you're gonna do one slip stitch. I said stitches, but I mean slip stitches. We're doing slip stitches from here out. We're not doing any single crochets, double crochets on this. This is all slip stitches in the front loop. And then we're gonna repeat that pattern around. Here's the next stitch, front loop only, two single crochets, one in the next. So it'll be two, I mean not single crochet, slip stitch. Two slip stitches, then one slip stitch. Two slip stitches and then one. I'm going to pause here, you do the same. We'll come back when we're at the end of the round. Okay, I'm all the way around. So I'm going to attach with a slip stitch to the first slip stitch. Turn, chain one. Now the pattern will be in the front loop only. We're going to do two slip stitches in the first stitch. One slip stitch in the next two stitches. They're front loop, all front loop. If I forget to say it, don't say, oh, did she want it in a front ruler? Yes, I want it in the front loop. The whole time we do this, it's always gonna be front loop, even if I forget to say it. Two slip stitches in the front loop on the next one. One slip stitch in the next front loop of the next two. Repeat that pattern around. Two slip stitches in one. One slip stitch in the next two until you get to the end of the round and then come back. So let's pause here. Okay, we're all the way around. So you're gonna go into the first slip stitch and attach to that with a slip stitch. And then turn, chain one, and we're going to front loop slip stitch, just one in every stitch around. I'll do two more. I did that one a little bit tight. Sorry about that. Oops, now it's splitting. There we go. I'll do two more with you and then we'll both pause and come back when you get all the way around. All right, last one to do together. Pause it and I'll pause it and we'll finish the round. Okay, I've come all the way around. I'm going to attach with a slip stitch to the first slip stitch. Turn, 
turn, chain one, and then do that same thing again. One front loop, slip stitch, and every stitch around. You can see where the stitch is here. I'm just going into the front loop. The name of this stitch is front loop slip stitch. <laughs> Very clever, right? <laughs> All right, well, let's both pause here, finish the round, and then come back. Okay, so we're back around. I'm going to attach with a slip stitch to the first slip stitch. And we are actually going to, and turn. Don't forget, every round you'll have to turn or the stitch doesn't quite look the same. I did that first stitch a little tight. You want to remember to keep your stitches loose. There we go. So then I'll turn and it's going to be chain one front loop, one front loop slip stitch into each one around. We're going to continue that until it measures four inches from bottom to top. We're not done, but this is where we're going to also add the eyes. So you'll want to pause here and finish. I paused to finish or to see how big we should make it. And then I came back. So you, I'm a step ahead of you. So you go ahead and pause, build it up to four inches and then come back. Okay, we're back. Now we're going to attach the safety eyes about three inches apart from the back of the eye to the, to the corner of the eye to the corner of the eye, left corner to the far right corner it will be about three inches. And you'll just wanna put them just below the top part of this. You can see you, you don't wanna block the stitches with the backing. So put it down. I believe I was probably somewhere around four or five rows down where I put it in. If you haven't had, if you don't have them attached yet, pause it until they're attached and come back because I'm going to go on to the next step. Okay, we are now going to start decreasing. So you have to figure out which way you were going and turn and then chain one. All of the stitches, if I forget to say it, are front loop slip stitches. We are going to continue with that. So we're going to slip stitch two together and then one slip stitch in the next stitch. Slip stitch two together in the front loop only slip stitch in the next stitch. I'll show you one more and then we will continue around with that pattern. Slip stitch two together, one slip stitch in the next stitch. Continue that all the way around and then come back. Okay, so at this point we're going to start putting some stuffing in. You're not gonna stuff it full yet uh, so that it can be a nice little sensory thing to play with. I love the texture of this stitch and I love how it's going to turn it into a cute little monster, but I also want to have it stuffed with things that feel really good. So there's going to be a mix of stuffing, marbles, and dried beans in mine. You can put whatever type of textured things you would like. So I'm going to put a little bit of stuff, excuse me, stuffing in. marbles and some dried beans okay so that's gonna I'm just gonna mix that up in there and obviously it's not stuffed full I will, as we're decreasing, continue stuffing as I decrease. Each row from here on out is going to be exactly the same as the one you did. You're going to front loop single, excuse me, front loop slip stitch two together, 
then one slip stitch in the next. Some rounds are going to end with one slip stitch on the last stitch and others are going to end with slip stitching two together. Either way is fine. Then you just start, you attach to the first slip stitch with a slip stitch, turn and chain and do it again until we get down to the last few stitches. So let's pause here and continue doing that. Continue stuffing, continue decreasing until you're down to your last few stitches. All right, so this last part, we just, I think we talked about it when you get to just a few stitches left. You draw your yarn through with a little bit of a tail and then you bring, you get a yarn needle or a darning needle and you thread that and you pull the yarn through to the bottom. <coughs> I went ahead and did that because I forgot, I thought I had already filmed it, but that's how you would finish off the top. And so here's what we have so far of the crab. Okay, next we're gonna do the claws. We're gonna make two of these. I'm using the same color that I made the body with. You can certainly choose to mix and match colors if you would like. So we're gonna start with a magic ring and we're gonna put four single crochets in the magic ring. One, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna pull tight and attach to the first one with a slip stitch. Next round, we're going to chain one, and then we're going to put two single crochets in the first stitch, and then one single crochet in the next. We'll do that one more time. We should end up with six single crochets. Two single crochets in the next stitch. I do like to catch my tail into the stitches. That way I don't have to deal with tails later. <laughs> and then one single crochet in the last stitch. I did my stitches a little tight again. Attach with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. And we're going to do the next round one more time. Chain one. We're gonna do the same thing one more time is what I meant to say. Two single crochets in this stitch. One in the next. We're gonna do two more sets of that. Two single crochets in the next stitch one single crochet in the next, one more time, two single crochets in the next stitch, and then one in the next. Attach with a slip stitch to the very first single crochet. Okay, and what we're gonna do is two rounds with just one single crochet in each stitch around. So we'll do one more and then one more. I'll start the first one here and then we'll pause it and finish both rounds and then come back. So I just chain one and you should do that at the beginning of each round and just put one single crochet in each stitch around. Attach the first one with a slip stitch, chain one and then do it one more time. Let's pause here and come back when that's done. All right, I have the next two rounds finished. So we're going to chain one. We're gonna start a small decrease. We're gonna decrease or single crochet two together, whichever way you prefer to hear it. And then one single crochet in the next stitch. Single crochet two together or decrease. One in the next stitch. We're gonna end up with six stitches in this round. One more time, single crochet two together. 
one single crochet in the next stitch. Attach with a slip stitch to the first single crochet and you have six single crochets in this round. Now we're going to do four more rounds total with just one single crochet in each stitch around. I'll do the first one with you, so you chain one each time you start the round, one single crochet in each stitch around, and this would be one of the four. Ooh, it is windy. I do have my windows open because it's nice to get some fresh air in here. Just knocked over a ball of yarn. Nothing tragic. <laughs> All right, attach to the first one with a slip stitch. Now do, I'm going to pause here. You do the same thing. <laughs> and we'll put three more rounds in with just one single crochet in each stitch around. Three more. And then come back. Right, here's how the claw looks. It doesn't have a pincher, I just have a, a little circle there where the claw is. If you are feeling ambitious and you would like to stuff it, you may, but I, I leave mine unstuffed. I don't think it really adds much to, to for it to be stuffed. So I cut down here so that there would be a tail to sew on, and you can just draw the string through. And the next part is sewing the claws on. All right, so make sure you make a second one. If you haven't done that yet, then go ahead and make a second one and then pick up the video right here. So pause here and then come back once you have a second one. This is showing how to sew the legs on. And so I'm going to sew them in the front here, kind of right towards the back of the eyes and using the eyes as a guide. So as it's sitting, it's gonna go right here. If it helps you, you can get stitch markers and pin them on. I'm not giving exact row numbers for these, just which I could, I could have you put a stitch marker in certain spots. But if you're using different materials or if you just have a different idea about how you want it to look, I don't want to limit your creativity. But if you want an exact spot, I would say kind of use the eye as a guide and go to the back of the eye and then come down while it's sitting flat. And you can put a stitch marker in to attach it while you sew it on, so you'll know exactly where you wanna sew it. And the, the thing about putting a stitch marker in before you actually sew it too, is that you can set it down and, and look at it. So use the back of the eye as a guide. stitch marker in to show you. So now I'm going to look at it. And I think, in my opinion, they look really good right here. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these on and then come back. All right, here's what we have so far. Probably looks a little silly at the moment, but once we get it all put together, it's going to look amazing. So we're gonna make six legs now. So I'm gonna show you how to make one, and I'm gonna do it in the body color, but again, you can feel free to be as creative as you want and use any color yarn that you want. Uh, I'll show you the one, and then you just make five more, so you have a total of six. So I'm gonna start in the magic ring. If I could find the end. <laughs> I thought I was closer to the end of the yarn there. Sorry about that. We're going to put five single crochets in a magic ring. These legs are going to be pretty easy. One, two, three, four, five. 
five single crochets in a magic ring, pull tight, attach to the first single crochet with a slip stitch, and we are just going to do six rounds of just chain one and putting one single crochet in each stitch around. We're not going to do any in increases or decreases in any of the rounds. So you'll have five total, one, two stitches, five double single crochets here in the round. Three, four, five. And remember, we're going to do a total of six more rounds. So you end on the seventh round technically because I counted the first round with our magic ring as one round. So that's two done total and you're going to stop when you're at seven total rounds or six more rounds with just one single crochet in each stitch around. Make sure you finish leaving a tail and then we'll sew it on the body. I'll come back for that. Ooh, it would be nice if it would be this fast in real life, huh? So I'm going to get the crab. The next thing to do is sew them on. So if you want to just line them up again to see how you think they look good, if you would like to put a stitch marker there to hold them in place until you sew them on. But I'm just going to kind of line it up and... To me, it's just kind of they're going right in a row, right behind the front claws. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these on. All right, here's how. Mine's a she, this is how she turned out. And it's optional, but you can sew on an applique or a hat, or you can even make it a hat, or anything else that you would like on top, that's optional. The applique I'm using came from a bag full that I got from a secondhand shop called The Art of Recycle. And I don't know if somebody made these, but I got a whole bag of them for 55 cents, so that was a pretty good deal. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up and watching some of my other video tutorials. Have a great day. Bye.